Hello, everyone. Welcome to a webinar of Drone Harmony on advanced workflows in Drone Harmony Web. Um, um, I'm accompanied today by Janine Stoll and Martin Fussberger, who will help me with the webinar. And um, I'd like to thank everybody who's taken the time to join us today. Um, we plan a webinar for about 30 to 40 minutes plus uh, some time for Q&A. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, I'll be helped by my colleagues in organizing the questions, answering some of them during the webinar itself. And uh, I will address some of the questions in the end of the webinar as far as uh, time will permit. So thank you again for uh, being here. Um, this webinar will be recorded and the recorded recording will be made available uh, both on our YouTube channel and also will be sent to the attendees um, in an email with the link to the recording. So um, all of this will be uh, documented. And if you'd like uh, to recap any of the things that we've uh, done today or share it with some other colleagues, you'll have um, the easy opportunity to, to do so. So uh, let's jump straight, uh, straight into it. So, so um, the topic of today is uh, advanced workflows uh, in Drone Harmony Web. And we will touch upon four main topics. So uh, the first topic is custom map overlays, which is um, the concept of using uh, georeferenced images as a layer on top of the map when we're planning within Drone Harmony Web. We will see how this can be achieved within Drone Harmony Web and how to work with these overlays. Uh, we will talk about new uh, exciting planning features for digital elevation and surface models okay. within uh, Drone Harmony Web. And um, we will talk about airspace information, UTM within Drone Harmony. And uh, we will also touch upon some of the new features in the web application, which are related to multi site views, filters, navigations, and so on. So, um, Thank you. My colleague is reminding me too <laughs> that I'm not yet sharing my presentation. So now it is. So we haven't missed much, just uh, the few topics that uh, we have uh, mentioned here that we will be covering. So custom app overlays, uh, new planning features within Drone Harmony Web, and uh, related to terrain and uh, digital surface models, airspace information, and multi site views, filters, and, uh, and navigation. Uh, as a special offer for all the participants of this webinar, we're actually offering also a 15% of a yearly license for all of the participants um, for the next couple of weeks. So if you're interested in this offer, we'll be more than happy to uh, set you up with such a license. Just send uh, an email to sales at droneharmony.com and uh, our colleagues will be able to uh, set you up with a license. So this is a um, deal exclusive to the participants of the webinar and um, will be valid for the next couple of weeks. And I'll remind you again towards the end of the webinar about this, about this opportunity. So um, just for you, uh, those of you who are not very familiar with Drone Harmony, a quick recap. So Drone Harmony is a data capture platform. It's designed to capture data around infrastructure, around complex infrastructure in particular. We have a web application, a mobile application, and the cloud. And the web application is the main planning tool where we plan flight missions, where we design the trajectory of the mission and um, understand how it relates to the environment in which we will perform the mission. In the mobile application, we're actually executing the same missions that we've planned in the web. And we can also plan missions in the mobile app, but it's more of the flight execution tool. And uh, we have a cloud service that kind of synchronizes everything together and stores data about our um, about our mission planning. So all the missions, all of the states, uh, terrain data and so on and so forth, everything that's relevant. So those are the main three components. And um, I will share a link to resources towards the end of the webinar for those who want to um, 
understand a bit in, in, in more depth some of the basics or some other aspects of the drone harmony uh, platform. I will not go too much into the basics today because this is um, a webinar about the more advanced uh, features within drone harmony, but the features um, the more basic features are all covered in our user guide and some other webinars and videos that we have that we can share with you later. So let's jump straight into the first topic and that's custom map overlays. So as I said, map overlays are nothing else than a georeferenced image that we can overlay on top of our map interface within Drone Harmony, And that allows us to see a better, more up-to-date perhaps picture of what's going on at our inspection site. So let's switch over to um, let's switch over to the Drone Harmony uh, web application and start seeing how we can actually use the uh, map overlays. So here we are in the Drone Harmony web application, and let me do a full screen here so that we have the largest possible view of the screen. So uh, many of you will be familiar with this basic view. I have a map view. We have some tabs on the right that allow us to filter things. And we have some inspection sites that I have already prepared and loaded for this webinar. And we will start by zooming into the, one of those inspection sites, the one here close to Zurich, Switzerland. And we'll start talking about the specifics of this, of this specific inspection site. So what you see here is that we have um, some um, rural area with some buildings. And what we have also is we have an overlay of an ortho mosaic of a georeferenced map that we have placed on top of, uh, on top of the map view. So to, to see it a bit better, I can actually switch here to the street view. And you will actually see that uh, part of this map is actually an image overlay on top of the of the standard Google Maps, in this case, background that we see here. So map overlays allow us to use a georeferenced image, an image that we have perhaps generated with some other software uh, after a data acquisition, and um, overlay it on top of the map in order to see the up-to-date uh, information in terms of where everything is. So in particular, if this were an inspect, uh, a construction site, we will be able to see the most up-to-date state of our construction site. If it's uh, um, an agricultural field like here, I will be able to see the most accurate uh, representation of this field and I'll be able to use all of my tools to perhaps outline this agricultural field in a very accurate way, something that I might not be able to do based just on um, standard map interfaces. So as you can see, uh, I can interact on top of on top of the on top of the um, on top of the map overlays in the same way that I can over interact over a standard map map uh, layer. So they are not in the way, they're just there to help us uh, understand where things are and as another uh, piece of information that we can use uh, in order to plan better missions. Um, what else can I do with the map overlay? So I can uh, change its transparency. Of course, I can remove it from the from the from the state, or I can also change its transparency in order to see, for example, how it relates to the actual map under uh, behind the scenes. So what I did here is I let me do it again. I clicked on the overlay, and then I have this is an object as every other objects within Drone Harmony Web, and now I have the option to change its transparency. For example, if I want to see what's actually behind the scene here, so this is me changing the transparency of the overlay from zero, meaning not seeing it at all, to maybe 30% all the way up to 100%, which means it's totally opaque and uh, covers the map underneath. So this is useful to be able to see where things are in reality with respect to maybe where they are in the map. And in order to also uh, be able to see various, various overlays or various uh, polygons together with the overlay in a convenient way. I can, of course, delete the overlay from the map. The overlay appears as an object within our, within our state. So here we are in a state called Uetliberg. And let me show you that underneath Uetliberg, we now have two types of objects. We have uh, areas, 
that you're probably familiar with. Those are those polygons. These are the areas. And we also have overlays. And we have this one overlay that's called new overlay. And I can interact with it through my filters the same way I can interact with every other object within a drone harmony scene. I can, uh, for example, remove its visibility so that it's completely not visible to me, or I can show it. So this is a very useful tool in order to uh, perform uh, data acquisition type tasks in areas which A, change dynamically, or B, where the map information is not absolutely up to date. Let me show you another uh, feature of the map overlays. So you're probably familiar with our 3D and terrain views, which are the two other views within John Harmony Web. So let's switch over to the 3D scene view, and you will see that in 3D scene, the map overlay is displayed as well. So we have the option of seeing the map overlay also in the 3D view. And this is very helpful, for example, in construction type projects where we will, where we will have an overlay that actually describes the up-to-date state of the construction site, but we're actually interested in, in the three-dimensional, let's say, representation of our scene. So we'll be able to, for example, have some outlines here of some of the buildings, and we'll be able to see that they're very well aligned with the georeferenced map that we've created of the construction site. So the overlay appears also within the 3D view. And finally, uh, how can we um, import overlay, you know, overlays into Drone Harmony Web? That's very simple. To those of you who are familiar with working with terrain within Drone Harmony Web, this is very similar to that. So we can go here over to the left hand side on the top to the menu. And now, together with um, our terrain storage, we have now a new storage type, which is called overlay storage. And underneath overlay storage, we have the same types of import and loading options as we have for terrain. So in particular, we can upload a new overlay. So to upload an overlay, we need to find a GeoTIFF file representing a, a georeferenced image, essentially, on our, on, our, on our device. So any such image can be uploaded if it's in GeoTIFF file format. And once we do this, let's, let's do that. So I prompt here and I see here actually this overlay, let's just load it again. I can give it a name, let's call it new overlay. And um, I can click on process. When I click on process, the um, drone harmony will automatically try to find the uh, reference system the coordinate system for this georeferenced image. And if I agree with this, in most cases, there's no need to change this. Uh, I can just click on process and it will process this uh, overlay. I don't need to wait for this to complete. It, depending on the size, it might take time. So this is, this is now uploaded to the Drone Harmony Cloud and prepared for display and for mission planning, basically. I can close this. And it will, this overlay will then appear under my load overlay option here on the left, which you can see now I have this new overlay that I created and its status is that it's being processed. And I have all the other previously processed overlays here that I can easily load. So the load overlay is the next step after uploading and I can also manage them, delete or uh, at the moment, delete overlays in case I want to remove them from my cloud storage. So this is it about map overlays, and we can uh, continue to the, to the next topic of today. So let's jump back in here. So uh, before we move on to the next topic, just a quick poll to help us uh, understand uh, our crowd a little bit better. So this is an anonymous poll. So I will launch a very quick poll right now and I'll be very grateful if you will uh, answer these two very, very short questions. I will uh, maybe wait 30 seconds to a minute uh, to see uh, some of you completing the poll and then we can, and then we can continue with the webinar. OK, 
Okay, maybe 10 more seconds and then we will continue. Okay, thank you very much for your answers. It's very useful for us to understand uh, our crowd and, um, and uh, we can continue. So uh, the next feature that I want to discuss is uh, some additional features that we're actually adding um, as of next week to Drone Harmony Web, but I'm happy to announce and discuss them already today, uh, which, which are uh, features that are using terrain models in a much more sophisticated way to plan missions, terrain or surface models. So what we call, we call these features hill scan, and you will soon understand why we call it hill scan. So uh, to those of you who are familiar with um, terrain following or uh, mapping areas with um, different elevation um, um, profiles, you know that there is a very standard technique that's uh, available in many applications that are enabling mapping of, of, uh, of, of hilly terrain or mapping in general. So when we try to map a rather flat area, what we will usually do is we will perform as kind of standard grid flight mission. So if you can imagine this picture here on the left, we will be flying our drone in kind of a grid pattern uh, on a fixed altitude, and we'll be taking pictures facing down, maybe at some angle sometimes, but for the most part, we'll be taking nadir pictures facing down. And um, when it comes to mapping, uh, areas with uh, varying elevations, there are several issues with this kind of mapping. So one, one issue is that the ground sampling distance is not the same. So obviously the distance of the camera from the ground is different depending on where we are along this grid. Um, of course, this also causes issues with overlaps between images. So if we are going to reconstruct this set of images to create some sort of model, for example, a map overlay. This might be a serious issue because we might not get um, uniform overlaps across the board. And of course, um, the angle at which the camera is facing our terrain or our surface is different at, for, at every picture. And when uh, the terrain becomes steep, this angle is really not ideal. We might not be seeing, uh, we'll not be getting a good representation of the, of the, of the area. Um, terrain following is solving some of these issues and actually it's solving a lot of these issues for um, kind of mildly changing terrain. So in particular, terrain following just means fly along the same kind of grid pattern. However, just adjust the altitude of the flight to be at a given altitude above, at the given altitude above the ground at that particular location. So it will look like something like the second picture here on the right. So now we achieved uniform ground sampling distance, but we might still sometimes have non-uniform overlaps and camera facing the surface has the, still the same problem. Obviously the angles at which we're facing the surface have not changed. Um, we might have helped our overlaps a little bit, but in areas where you know, the area becomes, for example, very steep or very non-uniform, we cannot expect to have good overlap uh, happening in these areas, or at least not uniform, not the same as in these parts on the left-hand side, for example. So what we've designed uh, with collaboration with some uh, enterprise customers is a feature that we call HillScan. And HillScan is trying to address those issues of terrain following. And in particular, um, similar to terrain following, what it does is that it guarantees that you are remaining at a fixed distance from the surface that you're trying to inspect. However, there's two main differences. So one main difference is that we um, hill scan guarantees also uniform overlaps because of the way that it angles uh, the camera towards the surface and the way that it covers um, terrain, parts of the terrain that have different steepness. So in an illustration, a hill scan of the same area will look like the picture here on the right, where you see that we always have uh, a very good angle of attack in terms of how the camera is facing the, sur the surface. And we also have uniform overlaps because of this fact, because the camera is always facing the surface at an almost 90 degree angle. And of course the uniform GSD is also maintained because we are at a fixed chosen distance from the surface. When is this useful? Well, this is useful when we're inspecting, for example, steep terrain, things like cliffs or very steep hills, or where, when we're inspecting very non-uniform terrain, where we have one time 
uh, something that's almost flat and another time and a different part of the same terrain is um, uh, sloped in one way and some other part in another way. So let's see how hill scan works within Drone Harmony Web. So I will switch back here. I will move myself maybe here to the left. Let's go back up to the view of all of our uh, loaded sites within Drone Harmony uh, Web. And let's switch over to this inspection site here on the bottom. And uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll actually zoom out a little bit. And let's look here at the terrain view, at the terrain view in Google as kind of a first indication of what kind of terrain we're talking about when we're, when we're working in this area here in Switzerland. So one good thing about living in Switzerland is that we have no shortage of very beautiful and steep mountains. So this is one such area here in Switzerland. And um, what we're interested in is performing some sort of inspection work within this area. So perhaps we want to um, map one of the faces of this mountain here or some several faces down there. So the question is, how can we achieve this? And for this, we've designed this mission that we've called uh, Hill Scan. And let's see how it, how it works. So let's switch over to uh, Terrain View. So when we switch over to Terrain View, remember that if we have terrain data loaded in our, in our, in our state, we have the ability to view the terrain in a fully immersive 3D, 3D environment, which we called Terrain View. And this is Terrain View. You see that we indeed have very steep terrain here. Now the tiles of the terrain are loaded from the cloud and we can look around and see that indeed this area is very, very steep. And to map this area with a simple terrain following type mission would be close to impossible or very difficult, or at least it would, it would have some gaps in the data because we have areas here that are practically vertical, practically uh, like a wall, as you can see down here. So let's see how um, our new uh, flight planning mission is able to achieve good coverage of an area like that. So we go to the plus, as we always do when we plan a new mission. On, down the bottom right corner. We switch to terrain because we're working with the terrain with terrain data. And here now under advanced, we have a new mission that's called terrain hill scan and we will choose this mission. We will choose this area that we see here. I didn't rename it, but I knew that I'll recognize it from the picture. And we continue with our with our workflow, we now need to set a takeoff location. So let's set this as a takeoff location. Press to continue. And we are entering our dual, dual window as usual, where on the left, we have parameters that we can adjust. And on the right, we see the result of our mission. So first off, what you see is that we have here a mission that's uh, at a ground, let's say at a distance from, from terrain of 100 meters. And we have an additional safety parameter here, which just tells us how far away from any part of the surface of the terrain we want to be, which is currently set to 25 meters. So we don't want to come any closer than 25 meters to any point in the terrain. So if I now rotate the view a little bit, you will see that this mission has seems like it's adhering the surface quite well, but let me change a little bit the parameters so that you see uh, quite how different this mission, this type of mission is from, from, from simple terrain following. So I changed the, the ground, the, the distance from the surface to 50 meters. And now we start seeing a little bit better how, how, how um, hill scan works. So we see that we have we have a very nice coverage in terms of the distance from the surface. And not only that, uh, if I come closer, you see that our cameras are facing very, very accurately the terrain itself. So we've achieved the goals that we want to achieve for inspecting something like this. And we will see more examples. This is perhaps the simple example where Hillscan uh, starts making sense in terms of a, a feature that will, is, is, is superior to terrain following in the classical sense. Uh, of course, other parameters that are relevant to such flights can also be adjusted. Under overlap, we can change the side lap and the front lap, and they work exactly as they would in a standard mapping type mission. So let's save this mission. Let's call this hill, hill scan one. 
Okay. Now, um, now we spoke about steep terrain and how achieving a good uh, overlap and a good GSD for steep terrain is a challenge. What happens if the terrain is not just steep, it's also very complicated. So for this, we can take a look, for example, at another area that I've just prepared here. Um, let me probably easiest, oh, it, it's here actually, yes. So if you, if you see this area here, it has more than one challenge if we're going to map this area. So first off, it has very, very steep part here on the left, but it also has very non-uniform, um, let's say terrain or um, profile in general. And this is an issue. So it's very hard to find any grid that will cover in any level of uniformity, this kind of terrain. But if we use hill scan, we can actually in one mission achieve this coverage. So let's see how that works. We go again to the plus, to terrain, advanced and terrain hill scan. This time we will choose the second area here. Again, we will pick a lift of location and we are in our dual, dual view where on the left we'll adjust parameters, on the right we will see our mission being generated. So you see here, this is the mission for 100 meters away. This is quite far away, but you already see that the mission is nothing like a terrain, uh, let's say terrain following mission. It's not just above the terrain facing down. It's actually adhering to the terrain in a much, much better way. Again, it's easier to see this if we come a bit closer, let's say 50 meters, if we want a GSD of, let's say, two centimeters for, for your typical DJI camera. And you see how, how much more complex this mission needs to be in order to achieve the coverage that we, that we actually want of such an area. So if you are in the business of mapping or inspecting steep terrain, cliffs, uh, mines, which have steep walls and so on and so forth, Hill scan will be a great tool for you to be able to achieve these mapping missions with very few clicks and without much hassle. So let's save this mission as well. Let's call this Hill scan 2. Um, to appreciate even, even better uh, how Hill scan is different from terrain following, let me quickly switch back to map view and show you um, a concrete a concrete area where where we have uh, where we have partners that they are doing some work and we will show you two missions. One mission is the typical terrain following type mission, and the other mission is uh, a hill scan that was designed for the same area. And you see immediately the difference between the two. So I'll go here to my filters. Now I'm in fluid and comparison, and under plans I see that I have three missions here. So I know that that mission I don't care about. And here I have two other missions. One, one mission, you see this one that I've just highlighted, it looks like a standard grid. So this will be our standard terrain, let's say following type mission. And the other one will be our hill scan mission. So let's first turn off hill scan, the hill scan mission, and let's switch over to terrain view and see how this mission actually looks like. So this will be our standard terrain following. So you see, when I look at the area from the top, it looks like a nice, perfect grid. However, um, it's completely useless in terms of mapping the steep parts. And um, furthermore, in areas which are kind of semi-steep that are a bit sloped or sloped in funny ways, the coverage is very non-uniform. We have um, decent coverage in kind of the flat areas, but nothing, nothing that can be used in the non-steep non areas. So this, and it doesn't really matter in what direction you will angle the grid, it will have this issue just because of the steepness and the changes in, in, in profile of this terrain. Um, now let's look at the hill scan version of this mission. And we will see how different this is and how well this covers this terrain. And you see that it's, it's really much more complex than just placing a grid over a terrain. It's um, a different way of just using a terrain data underneath, being able to understand its shapes and design a mission that is A, understandable and can be executed and B, uh, gives a good coverage, gives a good coverage of the given area. So this is the hill scan version. So hill scan will be released 
next week. We will also make some. Uh, we, we will also publish uh, a blog post, an interesting blog post about this with uh, with some customer um, that 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 is using Hillscan, and we'll be able to you'll be able to understand some of the use cases, some of, uh, some additional use cases for Hillscan. But we'll be curious to hear your opinion later on on what feature if you find this feature interesting for you and what. Um, and what, what feature among the features that we'll be discussing today that are new are of most interest to you, to you and your work. So this is Hillscan. It will be part of the suit of, um, let's say, terrain aware, or let's say the, the suit of automa automated missions that are using terrain within Drone Harmony Web. Okay, so let's go back here. Um, it's also interesting, by the way, to look at such emissions from the top and to appreciate that it's very, very hard to be able to design a mission like this uh, in, in a map interface. It's very, very difficult, it's close to impossible. You see how non-uniform it looks when you actually look at it from the top. It's anything but a grid. Um, but when you look at it in 3D, it makes perfect sense because you see how well things are covered. Okay, so let's jump back to our site view where we see all of our sites together. And let's move back to our presentation and see what our next topic is. So the next topic is airspace information or UTM, uh, unmanned traffic management. And here we want to uh, show you a new feature within Run Harmony Web that's related to displaying airspace information within the Drone Harmony interface. So essentially this is a tool to design safer flights, uh, to understand what airspace we are going to plan flight in or execute a flight in, and to prepare for uh, any kind of certification needs that we might need. So all of this information uh, can be now accessed and we can prepare ourselves better for uh, and plan missions that are, let's say, conformal to the rules and regulations in the area that we're flying. So for this, in, uh, for this uh, feature, we've actually partnered with a, one of the leaders in, in UTM for drones in the world called Altitude Angel. And their data is integrated now within the Drone Harmony web application. And I will now show you how you can access this data, how can you view it, and how you can parse it. So let's switch now back to our uh, web application. And uh, let's switch, let's go to any, any site. Let's go to this site here, one that we haven't seen before. So this is uh, some inspection site within Zurich. And to access the UTM information, the airspace information, all we need to do is we need to click on this new icon here on the right. So this uh, icon prompts the airspace information and airspace restrictions tab and when we click on it, what happens is that the map is populated with overlays that represent different areas with flight restrictions. And as I said, and you see here below, we have partnered with Altitude Angels and Angel and integrated their excellent data set that's updated on a regular basis to display their data within, within the application. So what do we see here? So let's zoom out a little bit because we will see perhaps a bit more uh, richness in terms of the type of airspace information that we see. So you see that um, now that I've clicked on this icon, I, I have a bunch of new overlays here on the map. And these overlays represent restriction zones or zones where there are there is some additional information about the airspace that I might want to know. If I click anywhere, let's say I click here, I have, it's prompted to me, what are the exact zones that are available in this specific area where I clicked. So I have four different area definitions, four different areas here. So one of them is, for example, Zurich TMA Sector 4C airspace. I can click on it to understand a bit more about it. I can read a summary about it. I can know things about vertical limits and so on and so forth. Let's go to another example. For example, here we have the airport of Zurich. And as we expect around the airport, there is some no-fly zone or some air, uh, airspace restriction. I can click here and I indeed see that I have the Zurich airport larger area kind of restriction, some smaller restriction. And I can again 
click on any of these and understand what they actually mean. So I'll be able to, in my mission planning, understand if I'm planning in an area where I, don't, I have some sort of restrictions and what they actually are. Uh, similarly to the way that we can interact on the map, we can also go here to the right to the tab itself. And here we have also a way of uh, visualizing the different, the different areas. If I just hover over any one of these restriction zones that are available in this part of the map here, I can, I can uh, hover over them and I will see what they are. So under airports, for example, we have two different, two different uh, layers and under airspace, which is slightly more general, I have several. Yeah, so this is a way for us to plan safer flights. If we need to know, are we going to perform a flight in an area which is uh, restricted in one way or another, we now have the option within Drone Harmony to do so. Um, Altitude Angel is, um, has very good coverage in uh, many countries in the Western world. So uh, Europe, uh, United States and so on. So um, if you want to know more on the coverage map of Altitude Angel, uh, their website provides a lot of useful information on that. So this is um, a feature that's very much around safety, about uh, planning in areas where it's safe and understanding what are, let's say, some of the activities that we'll need to undertake in order to uh, achieve a legal and safe flight in certain areas. To remove these overlays or these, this layer of UTM, I can click again on the icon and all of this disappears, okay? So this is a way for me to prompt this information and prompt it back very easily when I plan missions. Okay, so this is uh, the topic of UTM and its availability, its, its new availability within the Drone Harmony web, web application. Perfect. So let's go back to our presentation and uh, see what's the next topic. So um, before I jump into workflow improvements, which is just a very short description of some of the new things that we've added within the Drone Harmony web application, and to be able to show you some of these new things in case you don't know them, let me just quickly run a new poll, uh, an even shorter one than before, the results of which I'm very happy to share also with you. And that's on the topic of what of the which one of the three features that I've presented to you today I remind you those are the map overlays, the advanced terrain features, and the UTM and airspace integration. Which one of those do you find the most useful for your specific, for your specific work? So I will now uh, start this poll. And I'm, I'd be very grateful if you could uh, answer this question for us. And then I will share the result with everybody. Perfect, maybe 10 more seconds to allow some people who might still want to make a decision on this. Great, okay. Thank you everybody who, who has given their answers. It's of course anonymous. Uh, I'll end the polling and I'll share the results. So we see that um, actually is quite a good split here. We have, um, very large number of people that are interested in the advanced terrain features. Uh, custom maps coming in second and airspace information coming in third. And uh, this is very interesting. Actually, uh, very, very useful for us also to understand how to prioritize uh, future development along all of these three tracks. So thank you very much for sharing this information with us. So uh, the last part of the webinar, which will really be very short, and then we will start our Q&A of about 10 minutes, is um, workflow improvements in Drone Harmony Web. So um, the topics that I want to touch upon real quick is multi-site views, filters, navigation, and OpenStreetMap in import support, uh, import. So uh, some of these were actually already did in the webinar today. So multi-site views, 
filters and navigation are kind of combined together for me. And they're useful for when we have more than one site open in our Drone Harmony application at the same time. So let's switch back to Drone Harmony. So multi-site views. So what, what we're looking at now is a multi-site view. We have four sites, two down here and two up here. And we um, see all of them, how they are spread over the map. And to see all of the open sites at the same time, we can always click on this icon center view here on the right. Clicking on this icon wherever we are in the world. If I click on this icon, we're always centered to the view of all of the open sites at the same time. So we can have several sites open at the same time. As we've seen, all of these four sites which I presented today were open at the same time. We could jump from one to the other. Now, um, very easy way to zoom into a site is just double click on the site, but you can also right click and, um, and just center. And there are ways of uh, switching between the views also when you are in 3D view. So uh, sometimes when we're in map view, it's easy to understand where we are because we see the context, we see the map. But if we are in, in the 3D scene, it becomes a bit more complicated because we don't see as much of the map context around it. However, we have here on the left, uh, a new navigation bar that allows us actually to jump from site to site. So that's one thing that you might find useful if you have more than one, let's say, inspection site or construction site uh, open within Drone Harmony Web. We can move to any one of the four sites that are all named. You can give them any name you like. For example, we can go to uh, Utliberg, which is where we had the map overlay and some other things. So this is quick navigation. And in addition, a very useful thing to work with when we have either a complex site or several sites at the same time is to use the filters. So the filter tab is the top icon here on the right. And it, it is now grouped in a way that the site is the highest level of the grouping. So we have four sites. We see all four of them up here. We can zoom into them. We can delete them from the, from the, from the state, or we can uh, remove them from the visibility, so hide them. They're still in the state, but they'll be hidden. When I enter any one of them, for example, Industrial Site Zurich, I start seeing the subcategories, things like areas, plans, and points of interest. And in a similar way, I can hide each one of them separately, or let's say, zoom in on to, to any one of them. So let's say I want to zoom in onto this building, I can just double click on it, and it will zoom in for me on that specific building in that specific inspection site. So to navigate, two specific assets, two specific missions, use the filter tabs on the right, use them also to change the visibility of what you see in order to be able to see the layer that you're actually interested in. So those are filters, multi-site views. Um, the last thing that I wanted to show you is uh, a tool that perhaps some of you have not seen before, and that's um, an import tool that is very useful if you're planning um, inspections in urban areas or in areas where, let's say, map the map information provides some information about, about the buildings, about the building structures in the area. So in this particular example, let's now change to, uh, to a hybrid map to be able to see better what buildings we have behind. And uh, I'll just quickly demonstrate the tool to you. So uh, if you're performing inspections uh, in areas where you have buildings and you suspect that these buildings are available uh, within the map information that's in integrated within Drone Harmony, you can give a try to the drone, to the building import tool here on the left. So by clicking on the building import tool, you are informed that you're now using a tool that pulls information from open street maps, which is integrated as well within Drone Harmony now. You can click on continue and select an area in which you want to pull information from open street maps. All of the building information that's available within the selected area will be populated as areas or structures within your Drone Harmony scene. So let's say this, I can press on continue and whatever OpenStreetMaps has available behind the scenes for this area will be now populated. In some cases, it will have the heights of the structures as well. In some cases, it will only have the outlines of the structure. So you see that quite a bit of information has been populated for me. That would be quite a hassle to try to import all of this data, let's say manually, or even create KML files for these things. 
So just to switch over to 3D scene, you see actually that some of these buildings actually have a height. And this is, this is the case for some, some of the data within OpenStreetMaps and sometimes not. It's sometimes useful to click on the structure and, uh, and then you get some additional information. For example, OSM metadata here, you have the height five and a half stories. This means probably or five and a half, half meters. Um, and this is um, additional information that's sometimes useful if you're not sure what you're facing in a new inspection site where you're going to the first time. So this is just a way, another kind of simple tool that you can try to use when you're setting up, when you're setting up new scenes for your inspections within John Harmony. Okay, so this is, uh, this covers it for the simple, uh, for, for some of the usability additions that we've added to Drone Harmony Web. Let's go back to the presentation now. Um, what we wanted to also tell you in case you're not familiar is that we've created a new resource page on our website. Um, many of you might have stumbled upon it already or knew that it existed, but just wanted to tell you that we've put all of our resources, including webinars, recordings of webinars and video tutorials, as well as our brand new user guide here under one umbrella. And uh, let's just navigate to it. So let's click on this. I hid the link behind the scenes here. So you see that this is the site that you will arrive to. And you have here a link to our YouTube channel, specifically to the playlist for video tutorials, the one for the webinar, webinars, the blog, uh, and uh, where we publish a lot of use cases and things like this. We will publish next week a use case using hill scan, the new terrain features, for example, as well as our user guide, which is kind of the manual, if you may, of Drone Harmony. Let's quickly jump into the user guide. And you see that this is kind of a wiki format. It's not uh, anymore kind of the old user guide we used to have, which was a long file. This is now very easy to search and navigate. So if you're interested in anything in particular, for example, terrain, you can just start typing terrain here in the top and you will see all of the articles that are related to terrain. And you can choose the one, the one that's relevant for you. So please use the user guide if you want to find question, answers to questions that you may have. The user guide links to a lot of the videos. So the user guide is actually a great starting point in case you, in case you want to start using Drone Harmony, you can start with Quick Start and then go into the different topics as time permits. So this is, this is the Drone Harmony uh, resource page and it will of course get richer and richer as time progresses. And this is uh, it for my presentation. Uh, I want to remind you that if you're interested in acquiring a Drone Harmony license, a yearly license, um, we have a special offer of 15% off for a yearly license for everybody who's attending the, this webinar. If you're interested within the next two weeks, please contact our sales and we'll be more than happy to set you up with such a license. Um, we will share the recording and here are some additional links and email addresses that might be interesting for, to some of you, support is support at droneharmony.com. Um, the URL of the web application is of course app.droneharmony.com. So um, this is it for my webinar and I'm very happy to start uh, the Q&A now. And we'll probably go for maybe seven to 10 minutes with the Q&A. Okay. Since we don't have questions, let me comes to the share. Mm -hmm. Um, while we're waiting for some of the questions, because I see that Martin has done a great job of answering <laughs> existing questions while I was talking, um, maybe we'll talk a little bit about things to come uh, for Drone Harmony. So um, as you can imagine, we'll be working on various uh, improvements of some of the features that you've seen here already. Um, there are some bigger changes that are coming within uh, the year 2021. So we're definitely going to work a lot on what we call kind of data quality, uh, which means 
giving you the options, uh, various options to verify that, for example, the data you've collected in the field is, 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 is of the quality that, that you need and that there was no, for example, issue with the drone camera or something like that. So all of these um, additional tools that will help you make sure you don't need to come back to the site. So we're working a lot on um, ways to improve the usability both in mobile and in web that will uh, help you uh, guarantee um, that, you, that you capture exactly the data, for example, issues with focus, uh, missed, missed images and things like this. We are working on um, a, a, a version for the iOS uh, mo uh, mobile system suit. So basically for uh, Apple devices, iOS based devices. Um, we know that this is one of the biggest requests, uh, maybe the, big, the biggest request of all Drone Harmony, uh, let's say users. Um, we are working hard on an iOS version and we expect to release a first version of iOS somewhere during this year. We, can, we don't have an exact ETA right now, but you can, you can, you can imagine it will be somewhere towards the middle of the year. And of course, uh, this will be a version that we will be um, improving and let's say we hope that the iOS version uh, kind of catches up with our, with our quite, quite established Android, Android application towards the end of the year and into 2022. So that's one of the bigger news looking forward. We also look at uh, releasing a new version of our Android application, but this is, this is even closer in the future. So um, those are kind of some of the highlights for this year. Of course, we're always working on more ways of automating your work workflow uh, in terms of uh, we're trying to listen to use cases and understand what features can we develop in order to make uh, make some of the um, some of these workflows just better, just more uh, efficient and less error prone. Um, I see now one question in the chat. Let's see. Um, in the Q and A, there is uh, one more question. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to record? Uh, instruments values from the drone in addition to the photographs. So um, from this I understand, um, so from this I understand that the question is whether you can record sensory data, for example, or uh, basically other uh, other sensor sensor outputs of the drone. So it, it is it is possible, it depends on the drone platform. Um, Drone Harmony currently doesn't um, provide access to other sensors. Of course, there's additional information that's being recorded and logged when you perform a Drone Harmony uh, flight. So for example, telemetry and logs is something that's definitely available. It's uh, the telemetry is presented to you, of course, while you're flying and it's also logged so that um, for your compliance, uh, needs and so on and so forth. You'll be able to you'll be able to use those logs in the future. So there's um, definitely certain things that are recorded beyond just uh, the captured images. However, uh, things like uh, there's a, depending on the drone platform, of course, there might be some additional sensors, and that's something that we'll we're always uh, we're always looking into into in the future. But at the moment, there's nothing. Let's say that. To, uh, that the, the drone harmony is pulling out of, let's say, the DJI drones beyond beyond the sensory data, which is the videos or images that we're capturing. Um, the Mavic Air 2 support, it's a great question. We are working on the support. Uh, the situation with the Mavic Air 2 is that DJI has released a so-called alpha support for it, which means that if we are integrating this SDK, we're integrating an SDK that is uh, defined as an alpha by DJI. And um, it's a bit hard to say if there are some um, stability issues with that SDK. And what we're doing now is we're basically trying to test and see how stable this is. We're trying to evaluate whether this is um, whether, whether this is sufficiently stable SDK to release and to have our customer base rely on it to perform missions um, in an autonomous way. Our goal is to integrate it as quickly as possible. And our hope is to integrate it within the first quarter of, of this year. Um, next question is, can we synchronize filters between web and mobile apps? 
in particular visibility of various elements. Um, so in terms of the filters, um, within the Drone Harmony mobile app, um, there is a different concept of filtering. You don't really have the same filter tab that you have within the Drone Harmony uh, web application. Um, so it's, it's a bit different. It's not the same. Um, and um, what, what's synchronized between the web application and the mobile application is, is actually really um, the state and the current part of the state that's being synchronized is everything that's um, kind of drone harmony primitives, things like the areas, polygons, and points of interest, as well as the missions, of course, because the missions need to be there for flight execution. The things that are not yet synchronized to the mobile application are things like overlays and terrain. And there are various reasons for this, one of them being that those, those uh, data are usually much heavier, require much more processing power, and at times require streaming of data from the internet. And in the mobile application setup, we're usually not in a, in a situation where we can we can either have this processing power or or we have this uh, access to the internet. However, we are looking at ways for the future to bring both the terrain view as well as map overlays into the mobile app. So we definitely want to have some form of these available there as well in the future. Um, there is a question about dam inspection. So it's, it's a great question because um, when it comes to dams, there's, it, it, it can depend on the shape of the dam. And um, there are um, customers that we are aware that are actually performing dam inspections using uh, the structures basically the drone harmony areas, and then they're using missions in the spirit of um, facades, facade type missions. And in, and in some cases, if you have a good surface model of the dam, you might be able to use our hill scan mission that we've just described today. I must say that hill scan was not designed specifically for structures. We are looking at a version of hill scan that's uh, perhaps gonna be called structure scan or something like that, that will be tailored for structures. However, in the case of dams, it can very well be that if you have a good surface model of it, you might actually use hill scan directly and have a perfect mission for your dam. So I would say either, um, either uh, some kind of uh, facade type mission or a mission that's related to, uh, to terrain and specifically for hill scan. Um, in the future, uh, I think that the answer will always be the some sort of structure structure version of the hill scan, uh, which we we are actually looking into now. So this is actually a great question. You're more than welcome to write us an email if you want slightly more detailed answers.